Hello. Let us start this session on software testing. So far we have seen uh, MTP, DTP, DTC and review process of all the documents. This session is going to focus on test coverage. Okay. Test coverage meaning which all the areas that we need to cover when we do the test scenarios and test cases. If you have seen in the DTP session, we have already talked about crude method. Uh, create, read, update and delete. This approach, we are going to see a slightly deeper approach in this session. There are three levels within system testing itself. Okay. The first level is simple field level validations. The second level is form level validation. The third one is called workflow validations. Okay. Let us talk about each one of them. When you are writing test cases or test scenarios, you should try to cover all these levels within system testing. Let us talk about field level. Uh, let us take a simple form. Let us take a reservation form, maybe hotel reservation or airline reservation. There is a field called number of tickets, right? It is a text box. Uh, usually it is definitely it should be numeric, right? What values we need to give to test this? If you take this, I have different options, right? Assume that the number of tickets can be between 1 and say 10 max. Now, I have different options to test. Number one, one possible condition is give a blank, right? Don't give anything in that uh, field. Try to submit the data. See what happens. So you are giving a blank. That itself is a test. Then give a non-numeric character. Uh, you say alphabetic or punctuation, right? Alphabetic, maybe give A and then submit the form. See the system is giving you any errors, right? Or uh, punctuation. You just give a comma in that field, try to submit. Then you give a valid number, say 5, within the range that is given. It should accept, right? Uh, let me give whether it is a positive test or the negative test indicating like this is negative and uh, this is negative again. This is a positive test, right? That means when you are saying positive condition, you should make the system to work. Give the right value, see if it is working, right? The next one, there is something called format, okay? Uh, give the right format. They are asking about integers. They say the range is between 1 and 10, but they want integer, right? So, you have already given as 3 or 5, which is a positive condition. And you are giving a wrong format. Try to give a wrong format. Let us say, though it is, let us give 3.5, right? Though it is within the range of 1 and 10, uh, the format is wrong. They are expecting integers. You are giving a real number. Then there is something called boundaries. Boundaries or limits, right? Limits testing. You give the lower limit. Test whether it is accepting 1. Then upper limit, which is 10. Give that value. See whether it is working. Then give less than lower limit. Give a value as 0, right? 
this is a negative test then more than upper limit give say 11 this is also a negative condition so if you take this simple text box you are talking about 1 2 3 4 5 5 plus 4 9 different test for this particular text box alone within this you are giving positive negative and boundary test so if you classify this right very typically blank values tests right bad formats good and bad formats okay then good and bad types type meaning when it is asking about integers or say numeric you try to give numeric you try to give alphabetic see what happens then limits right good and bad limits any field you take you have these options left another example if you take uh, email right email ID I need to know whether this email ID is a valid email ID and whether the system validates it right so you can think of trying to give an email ID without a dot try to give a email ID without an at symbol uh, you are trying to give an email ID with four at symbols right and you are trying to give with commas with semicolons right trying to give everything as numeric right one two three at one two three dot two one two three right it may not be a valid email id right for every field think from blank value test good and bad formats good and bad types and then the limits right this is definitely to be tested for every field again uh, there is another thing called when we talk about the limits the limits or the boundaries have size boundary as well as val value boundaries okay when I say size boundary let us take an example right um, first name you are seeing a first name field in an application and they say it can only have 40 characters right when you give something as a 41st character that means you are exceeding the size boundary right in terms of the field length size boundary meaning field length right value boundary right is different for example we talked about the integer range though 99 is just uh, two digits in the ticket we talked about the range is 1 to 10 it is exceeding the value though the size is just two characters for 99 as well as 10 the field may not accept because the value of that though the size matches value doesn't match so when you're talking about limits you should check both size boundary as well as value boundary so any field you take you must test all these areas I hope this is clear the next level is form level validations this is where we talked about crude extensively because in a form there are many fields right there are many fields and finally fill all fields and submit form correct usually in the forms you will see OK button, cancel button, save button, delete button, right? Update button. So whenever you are dealing with forms, a form is nothing but a collection of fields. If you take the reservation form, you talk about uh, passenger uh, name, age, right? From city to city, etc, etc. In terms of uh, reservation details right there are so many other fields that you will be dealing, dealing with now you fill all these values then finally submit that form right the submission internally may be a delete submission or an add submission or a modify submission this is where we talked about crude method right but within this form level also there is one more thing that we need to check number one there are always something called mandatory fields right and there are something called optional fields okay 
whenever you are dealing with uh, mandatory fields, right? It cannot be blank, right? So if you give a blank value, it should stop. In optional fields, even blank values will be restricted, right? Will be, sorry, it will be allowed, right? So some fields may allow blank or null values. Some fields may not allow that. So whenever you are dealing with a form, you should ensure mandatory fields and optional fields. And again, there is something called dependent fields in a form. When you are testing one field, you may not find the error. For example, there are two fields. <coughs> Let us say from city and to city. From city cannot be same as to city in a reservation form. So the field to city is dependent on the field from city. So you need to have a condition that covers this. Right? When you are dealing with field values, okay, give this value to this city, it accepts or not. You stop there. But you don't do this. Especially you will come across when you deal with date fields. If there is something called from date and to date, right? For example, you are talking about a leave application in your HR, right? System. You have to do a from date and to date. To date cannot be less than from date, right? So there are some obligations in that. So dependent fields test also you should cover in the form values. So form level, you should ensure mandatory fields optional fields, dependent fields, at the same time the crude method, only at the form level you will be delete, deleting or updating or adding or viewing. That's with respect to field level. Then there is something called workflow validations. This is very very important. This is also known as, many companies call this as end-to-end -end tests. They also call it as string test. That means you try to do operations one after the other, see whether all these operations flow smoothly. So how to deal with this? Let us take a simple example. Right? Your workflow in instant messenger. In instant messenger, you are dealing with um, adding a contact. When you add a contact, first thing, there are multiple things that happen over here. You are adding a contact. Contact appears in your list. At the same time, contact gets a notification saying that, hey, you have been added as a friend. Please approve or not. Then, from that point, so this is one operation. The next operation can be contact approving your invite or accepting your invite, right? Then you get notified and then contact appears online, right? In your list. So if you see this, adding a contact, the job ends when you click add, the button. Then the contact appearing in your list is an action, this is an action. Now, if you look at the scenario preparation that we have talked about, we talked about something called send and receive also, right? This send and receive essentially tests the interfaces. Interfaces are nothing but data exchange between programs. So the moment I do something, it is notifying the other program, the other program is notifying me back. So there is something flowing that is called workflow. When the data flows, right? Data flows between users. It is called workflow, right? Now, you have to test this also. Because this workflow may be three levels, four levels, it may be. One may be dependent on the other, right? So ensure data flows between users. There is another thing called data flows between screens. This is also a workflow test. What example I can give for this? 
for example you go to your leave application form in your HR system then apply leave as part of the workflow manager approves right then again you view in your screen after some time right status changes to approved or if the manager denies it changed it says uh, leave declined right you did not move out of the screen you are in the same screen now it says pending approval once the manager is approving that it says approved you remain in the same screen still the data changes right this is one way of data flow within the same screen now data flowing between screens look at this same example you apply the leave before manager approves manager views the data right the screen that you see and the screen that the manager sees may not be the same correct so the data that you gave in your application screen goes to the approval screen of manager so this way the data moves between you and the manager the data moves from leave application screen to leave approval screen so everywhere you need to test this flow of data across the screens also one more thing right data flow also falls under reports right a report is nothing but a data collection from various places right you go to a uh, to the suppose you take a train for a journey right suppose you do a reservation in the train right when you go there the person the ticket examiner has a list that's a report you book the ticket in online booking system the examiner has that data in his or her report right a report is also nothing but another screen you put the data in one place data appears in other screen if that screen is printable it is called report right the report may come in html or pdf or excel or word right any format but essentially a report is also another screen so if the data can flow from one place to another place that is called end to end tests or string tests right so the coverage that you should do is field form workflow this is extremely important whenever you write test cases and test scenarios ensure that you cover field form level as well as workflow level i will stop this session here okay we will meet in the next session thank you